everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet this crisscross throw, uh, which it's an absolutely gorgeous throw. Uh, you can see it here in the photo and there were some photos at the beginning of the video. Also, if you head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com, the direct link is there for you in the description of this video. You'll also find some more photos of the blanket there. To give you an idea of it, I'll show you my corner of the sample one I've made here. Now this blanket, is made up of 120 and it sounds like a lot of these little textured squares each of these squares measures approximately five inches by five inches and then they are all pieced together in the end to create this gorgeous uh, crisscross throw uh, now i have worked my blanket in three different colors I've used this seafoam blue color, a white, and then a pale gray color, um, and then worked a solid color around for my edging. You of course can work this blanket in all one color or as many colors as you would like. For the blanket today, I'm going to be using a little bit of this Feels Like Butter Yarn by Line Brand Yarn. It's a 100% polyester. It's a worsted weight yarn if you're looking to substitute it. Uh, for the blanket, you're going to need approximately, so these are the bonus bundles of the yarn. There's 590 yards per ball. For the blanket, for your colors A, which I'm going to use the blue, you're going to need about two and a half of these balls of yarn. For colors B and C, you'll only need two balls of the yarn each for each color. Now, um, today in the video, I'm just going to work a little swatch of it. I'll be working two squares, piecing them together, and then showing you the simple edging that I've worked around it. Uh, the written pattern is free and it is on my website, richtexturescrochet.com. Again, the direct link is there for you in the video, uh, uh, in the description. As well, I've placed links about the materials that I'll be using as well in the description. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, finally, this blanket measures approximately 52 by 64 inches when it is completed. Uh, and the polyester is a tend to be a little bit heavier. So it is a blanket that's on the heavier side, but you'll love the texture and the weight of it. So let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Okay, now just before we get started, uh, as you're here, I invite you to take a moment and subscribe. And uh, also feel free afterward to take a look at some of the other videos, uh, free patterns and stitches that you might find here on my channel. And I'm so happy that you're here. So our square today, we're going to start by working one. Again, you're going to work 120 of these in total uh, and uh, there'll be 40 of each color. So today I'm using this uh, blue color, which was my color A that I had chosen. And you're going to start by making a slip knot and then chaining four. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, I'm actually using a four millimeter crochet hook. Once you have chained four, you can join with a slip stitch in that first stitch to form a ring. Now these blocks are worked from the center out and they are worked in rounds. For your round one, you're going to chain three and your chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. Next, work two more double crochet stitches all into the center of the ring. Chain three and then into your ring work three more double crochet stitches and you're going to repeat this two more times. Chain three and into the center of your ring work three more double crochet stitches. Chain 
chain three into the center, work three more double crochet stitches. Finally, chain three one more time and then join with a slip stitch in the top of your starting chain three. This brings you to the end of your round one. For round two, chain one. Your chain one does not count as a stitch. We're now going to start working some of our textured stitches and they are worked making front post and back post double crochet stitches. So for round two you're going to begin by working a front post double crochet around the same stitch as joining. So to make your front post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook around the post of the stitch down below. So in this case it was our chain three. Once you have inserted your hook from front through to back, back out through the front again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. That's a front post double crochet stitch. We're now going to work a back post double crochet around the next stitch. To work a back post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work, insert your hook from the back through to the front around the post of the next stitch and out through the back again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two more. That's your back post double crochet stitch. You're then going to work one more front post double crochet around the next stitch. When you come to your chain three space, into your chain three space, work two double crochets, chain three, and two more double crochet stitches. You're now going to repeat that all the way around. Work a front post double crochet around the next stitch, back post double crochet around the next, followed by a front post double crochet around the next stitch. When you come to your chain three space, work two double crochets, chain three, and two double crochet stitches all into the same chain three space. Repeat that twice more and meet me back here. Once you've come all the way around you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Do not turn your work. For row three, you're going to chain one. This time we're going to begin working a back post double crochet stitch around the same stitch as joining. So around this first stitch. And when I'm working my back post double crochet, I'm also working it around the chain one. So I'm treating it just as one stitch. So yarn over, bring my hook in back of my work, insert it around both the chain and the double, front post double crochet down below, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. You're then going to work a front post double crochet around the next stitch and a back post double crochet around the next stitch. And you're going to do that for a total of two times. So front post, back post, front post and back post. That brings us to our chain three space. Into your chain three space, work two double crochet stitches. 
a chain three and two double crochet stitches. We're now going to work front and back post double crochets all the way across. We're going to start by working a back post double crochet around the first stitch, followed by a front post double crochet around the next stitch, and we're going to do that three times all the way across. So back post, front post, back post and front post and end off on this side with one more back post double crochet. You'll then be at your chain three space into your chain three space, work two double crochets, chain three and two double crochets. Repeat that all the way around to your final chain three space, and then you can meet me back here. Once you've come around to your final chain three space, you have your two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. You'll have two stitches left at the top here. Work one back post double crochet around the next stitch followed by a front post double crochet around the next. And then you can join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. That brings you to the end of round three. For round four, you can chain one. We're then going to continue working front and back post double crochets across, beginning with a front post double crochet around that first stitch. back post double crochet around the next. Repeat that all the way across to your first chain three space. This time we're going to end with a front post double crochet. Then in our chain three space, Work two double crochets as before, chain three, and two double crochets. Beginning with a front post double crochet again in the next stitch, you're going to repeat our pattern all the way across, front post followed by a back post double crochet all the way around to your chain three space. In your chain three, work your two double crochets, chain three and two double crochets, and continue around. At the end of this round, you can join with a slip stitch in the top of the first stitch. At the end of round four, join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. For round five, chain one. Similar to round three, you're going to start with a back post double crochet around the same stitches joining. Followed by a front post double crochet in the next stitch. You're going to repeat that across to your first chain three space. like so. Your final stitch before the chain three space will be a back post double crochet. When you come to the chain three space, work two double crochet stitches, chain three and two double crochet stitches. 
Then continue repeating the pattern all the way around, beginning with a back post double crochet, followed by a front post double crochet. So repeat that all the way around to your first stitch, and then join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. At the end of round five, join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. And we now only have one round left for our little square. You're going to simply work chain one and then single crochet in the same stitch as joining. And then in each stitch all the way around, working three single crochet stitches into your chain three space. So this is going to give us just a nice, even, clean edge to work in when we are joining our squares together. So simply work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you come to your chain three space, as I am here, simply work three single crochets into your chain three space and then continue around the other side. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. You can then fasten off, weave in your ends, and then continue to repeat this pattern until you have 40 squares worked in each of your colors, A, B, and C. Once you've done that, of course, you can change the size of your blanket, simply changing how many squares of each color you're making. So once you are finished your squares, you can meet me back here. And I'll show you how I join my squares together, and then I'll work a simple edging around the outside of the entire blanket. Okay, so once you have finished your square, uh, you'll have fastened off, You'll have woven in any ends and you'll have worked your desired number of squares for each color. Today in the video, I'm just going to show you two. Once you have your squares done, you can see here how I placed mine uh, in this chart down here. Um, you're welcome to use this pattern as you would like, but uh, what you're going to want to do is just lay your squares out face down, so with the wrong side facing up, uh, out on the floor so you can see them or on a table, uh, wherever your workspace may be. So you're going to lay them down and you can either work sewing them together, uh, crocheting them together uh, by starting with your horizontal row, so going back and forth or your vertical rows. It doesn't really matter, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. There are other ways of joining squares together. You may have your own favorite one, but this one that I'm going to show you, uh, a slip stitch join working in our front loops only, is one of my favorite ways to join two squares together. So you're going to have your squares laying side by side. You're working in either a horizontal or vertical row. What you're going to do, is you're going to start by making a slip knot, place it on your hook, and you're going to jo join your yarn with a slip stitch. So going to, uh, I begin in one of the corners and, and working through both thicknesses, you're going to insert your hook under the front loop only. So that's, if you're looking at the top of your stitch, you have that nice V I'm gonna show you in the blue because it's easier. You have this nice V up here, your front loop is going to be the loop that's uh, closest to you. It's actually the back loop on your square, but because I have them face down, it's the front loop when it's facing me. So you're going to insert your hook under the front loop only of that first square, go across to the coordinating corner stitch on the other square, insert your hook front loop only, and then join with a slip stitch. You're then going to continue working across your squares, working in the front loops only under both thicknesses and working slip stitches all the way across. So insert your hook, both loops only, and then work a slip stitch. You're going to do that in each stitch. 
When you come to the end of your square, simply pick up the next two squares in the order that they come and continue working across your entire row just like this. I'll work a few more stitches and then show you what it looks like. You're going to do this for all your rows, both your vertical and your horizontal rows until your entire blanket has been joined together. There we go, I'll just turn it over here so you can see. So this is the front of my blanket now. You can see the join is in back, so it leaves a fairly nice, smooth, almost invisible join on your blanket squares. So go ahead, continue joining all of your squares together. Once you have them all joined together, you can meet me back here and we will finish off our blanket by working a simple edging. Okay, I've now joined my two sample squares here together. This is what my front looks like. And then when I turn it over on the back, it is a fairly smooth join slip stitch uh, on the back there. So you'll have worked this in your entire blanket. You're now ready to work a simple edging. Now because of the heavy texture in the blanket, I wanted to work just a smooth edging that would really highlight the texture that is in the squares. I've worked my edging all in one color and I'm using my color A here again. What you're going to do is you can make your slip knot and then in any corner of your blanket, you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch, just into any corner. Right now we're working under both loops. You're then going to chain one and this edging has three rounds. For round one, work a half double crochet stitch into that first stitch, and then into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your corner stitches, into each corner stitch, you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. So half double crochet in each stitch, all the way around when you come to your corner so over here my three single crochets in my corner space into that center stitch work three single crochets or three half double crochets sorry and then continue on down the next side continue all the way around when you come back to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet stitch When you come all the way around your round one of your edging, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, chain one, and we're going to turn our work. Sometimes I find when working and edging, especially if there's lots of half double crochet stitches in it, if you work always going in the same direction, then your, uh, then your edging is going to curl forward. So by turning, it's going to prevent it uh, from moving uh, curling forward on you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, work a single crochet round all the way around. So begin by working a single crochet into that first stitch. Now depending on where you joined your next stitch may be your corner stitch. So if it is the corner stitch for you, as it is for me, work three single crochet stitches into your corner stitch and then continue to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So do that, single crochet each stitch all the way around in your corner stitch, work three single crochet stitches. When you come to your first single crochet, join into the top of that first stitch. You can chain one and turn your work. At the end of round two, you're joining with a slip stitch in that first stitch, chain one, 
and turn your work. You're now going to work one final round for your edging and that's going to be one final half double crochet round. So half double crochet in the same stitch as joining and then in each stitch all the way around working three half double crochet stitches in each corner stitch as you did before. Once you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. You can then fasten off and weave in your ends and your crisscross throw pattern is complete. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe while you're here. Uh, if you haven't yet, connect with me on social media. I love to see all your finished products. And uh, be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet so that I can find them. So uh, until next time, happy crocheting. Bye. Bye.